in the previous video we discussed about the erythropoiosis. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now in this video, we'll be discussing about erythrocytes, aka red blood cells. These are specialized circulatory cells for gaseous transport, which mediates transportation of oxygen to cells and tissues, and then carbon dioxide from cells and tissues to lungs. A simple representation will be lungs delivering oxygen to cells and tissues by erythrocytes and then these erythrocytes take CO2 from cells and tissues to deliver this CO2 to lungs. Here we have the lungs having air in it or we can say gases in it. The erythrocytes takes out the oxygen from lungs and delivers this oxygen to cells and tissues as shown in the diagram. After utilizing oxygen, the cells and tissues give off the carbon dioxide which is then taken up by the RBCs and deliver it to the lungs for expiration. Now let's get to the structure of RBC. The RBC has bioconcave shape as shown in the animation. It's non-nucleated in case of mammals and there are no organelles present in the erythrocytes. The structures that are present in RBCs are the lipid membrane or we can say plasma membrane. Second is the surface or membrane proteins. Third is cytoplasm and fourth one is hemoglobin which is one of the important proteins present in the erythrocytes. Since RBC is without organelle, it survives up to 120 days on average. Now getting to the important proteins of erythrocytes. First is the hemoglobin. It's the iron containing oxygen transport protein. The hemoglobin ranges from 10 to 18 grams per deciliter of blood or we can say per 100 ml of blood. And it must be noted here, one molecule of hemoglobin can bind four molecules of oxygen. Here in the diagram, we can see the hemoglobin molecule, the quaternary structure with four globular protein subunits. The four oxygen molecule comes in and bind to the hemoglobin molecule in this way as shown in the animation. Then we have the membrane proteins, starting with band 3 protein, which mediates exchange of chloride ions with bicarbonate ions across the plasma membrane. Then we have spectrin protein, anchorin, protein 4.1, 4.2, glycophorin A and glycophorin C, actin molecule, band 3 molecule, stomatin molecule and CD47. Now let's visualize these proteins in the RBC membrane and how they interact with each other. In this diagram we have the RBC cell membrane showing band 3 protein, RAG protein, CD47 protein, glycophorin A, anchorin protein and protein 4.2 interacting with anchorin and band 3 protein. Then we have spectrin protein chain on the intracellular side of membrane as alpha spectrin in blue color and beta spectrin in orange color. The alpha spectrin interacts with anchorin protein shown in the diagram. We also have proteins like stomatin protein, GLUT1 protein, glycophorin C and protein 4.1. Here we see the protein 4.1 interacts with both chains of spectrin molecules as shown in the diagram. So these are the important proteins present on the RBC membrane. Their respective functions will be discussed in detail in the upcoming video. Furthermore, when we see the mutation in these proteins highlighted here, which includes band 3 protein, anchorin protein, spectrin protein and protein 4.2, mutation in these proteins leads to hereditary spherocytosis. Whereas the mutation in 4.1 protein, spectrin and band 3 will lead to hereditary elliptocytosis. Furthermore, we see hereditary spherocytosis is congenital hemolytic disorder, where we get the spherical shaping of erythrocytosis. In this case, we have the subtypes of diseases as HS1, it's due to the mutation of anchorin protein, HS2 due to mutation in spectrin beta protein, HS3 due to mutation in spectrin alpha, HS4 due to mutation in band 3 protein, and we also have HS5 due to mutation in protein 4.2. Now moving towards hereditary elliptocytosis where we have elliptical RBCs rather than bioconcave disc shaper. It also has got subtypes like EL1, mutation of protein 4.1, EL2, mutation of spectrin alpha, EL3, mutation of spectrin beta, and EL4, mutation of band 3 protein. So this is the brief outlook of RBCs and its structural components. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, do support my work on Patreon or YouTube, and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.